Fear not, Scranton. We're still here. God's still here for us, for you, for me here today. I'm Pastor Elliot Cook from Jackson Street Baptist Church here on the west side of Scranton to encourage you and remind you that we have work to do, dear Christian. It's so important that we put our, our hands to the plow and start working, that we start building the great church of Christ. I have a passage of scripture for you today. It's found from uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 3, starting in verse 18, 18 to 23. Uh, today is the passage I'd like for you to meditate on and consider with me. Do not deceive yourselves. This is something too easy to do. Think about it. We deceive ourselves all the time. If any of you thinks you are wise by the standards of this age, you should become fools so that you may become wise because the standards of this age are foolishness. God's way is wise. And it may seem foolish to the world. Oh, I'm going to wait till I'm married till I have sex. Oh, you're a virgin? You're going to stay a virgin? Oh, oh my goodness, you're deluded. How silly are you? You're missing out on so much. That's the way of the world. That's their uh, wisdom. And yet, what does it create but desires for others who aren't yours? You practice divorce before you get married by having intimate relations and then leaving them for another partner and then another and another. And on your wedding night, Who are you thinking of? And how special is that going to be for you? You see, the wisdom of this world isn't wise at all. It's foolishness. And God's ways, which the world views with ridicule and scorn, to remain chaste until you're married, well, they, they laugh at, at such standards today. They think them archaic. And uh, they would dissuade you from following it. But the one who follows God's ways, their marriages are pure. Their marriages are holy. When you remain celibate and your future wife, spouse, remains celibate, you come together and you learn and you grow together. There's no teaching the other one, bringing them along because you've learned so much in your promiscuity. There's no uh, thoughts of others and what they've done in this situation in bed with you. You know, you can not have any of that. And you can present yourself holy, spotless, pure, a very special gift to your spouse on your wedding night. That's what God intended, for sex to be something that binds us together, that procreates, that honors God, that is a very special gift and not something to be just given out to everyone. What makes it special is that it's reserved for someone in particular. Well, that's just one way. There are thousands of ways that the world would look at standards that we as Christians would take. And I used one. Uh, but there are so many ways. God wants us to be wise in how we behave and not like the world, who are truly the foolish ones. They miss out on so much because they reject God. They reject Christ and his death on the cross and God's way for life. It's not just, oh, I believe that Jesus died for me and then go off and live any way you want. That's not wisdom and that's not salvation. It's surrendering, um, confessing your sins, believing in Christ, but also wanting to, to glorify him, wanting to, to live pure and holy lives. And he asks us uh, to, to put aside the foolishness of this world, uh, which they call wisdom, and to take on the foolishness of God, which is true wisdom. Uh, kind of juxtaposed. In God's economy, it's the exact opposite of, from the world. Oftentimes, 
Are you wise enough to see it and, and understand it when it comes? For the wisdom of the world is foolishness in God's sight. As it is written, he catches the wise in their craftiness. <laughs> They're so crafty <laughs> that, that they show themselves to be fools um, and catch themselves in their own lies. Verse 20, and again, the Lord knows that the thoughts of the wise are futile. Indeed, they often are. Uh, some of the smartest people I know are some of the blindest people I've ever met. When they just refuse to even entertain thoughts of a God. How in the world could there be a God? Why, it all just happened by chance. I've been taught this. I have a PhD. Well, I have a PhD too. <laughs> and I happen to believe that there is most definitely a God. Uh, just because you have a PhD, just because you went to university, doesn't mean that God doesn't exist, people. You know, if he exists, he's going to exist, whether you trust and believe in him or not. And some of them can't even say that. If there is a God, he exists whether I believe in him or not. They're not even willing to acknowledge uh, that possibility. Uh, verse 21. So then, no more boasting about human leaders. All things are yours, whether Paul or Apollos or Cephas or the world or life or death or the present or the future. All are yours and you are of Christ and Christ is of God. The foolishness of the world um, the pettiness of the world, the cares of this world. You know, God, God will care for us. He cares more about us than we care about ourselves. He knows our future before we even start thinking about it. He already knows. And why wouldn't you want the insider information that's going to help you and get you on? It's all in the Word, the Bible precious gift from God, and uh, it's certainly uh, the wisdom of God for us. And it is uh, part of the armor of God. We've got to be in the Word, knowing and understanding it, so we can defeat the schemes of the devil, the foolishness of this world. We've got to be able to recognize truth from lies. How, how can you do that? By being in the Word. And when something in the Word tells you something that goes against what you've been taught, what you, what you yourself believe, guess what? You've got to put your own thoughts and beliefs aside and say, it's in the Word. So it is true. Not it must be true. It is true. It's God's special revelation to you and to me for his church so that we can distinguish between a truth and a lie, so that we can know right from wrong. And so that we can have happiness and contentment and blessing instead of all sorts of horrific situations and eventually death, separation from God for all eternity. You note, ever since the election, turn in the corner here, we're going on to building you up as a new babe in Christ. I want you to understand uh, the economy of how God looks at education and teaching and training. Um, so that you can be trained in the ways of God, not the ways of the world. We need to understand the world's ways so that we can be a good witness and testimony to them, so that we can understand the difference between right and wrong. You have to know what wrong is. Um, you don't have to participate in it, though. You don't have to fall for it. hook, line, and sinker. You know, You can protect yourself when you know and understand your enemy so much better, can't you? Um, those of you who went to West Point, military strategy, knowing your enemy, their strengths and weaknesses. As Christians, we ought to be doing the same while we're reinforcing our strengths and working on our defenses and our weaknesses, our temptations, our habits that drag us away into sin. Hey, Christian, I want to pray for you I want to pray for your, your continued growth in spiritual things. Get yourself into a Bible study. Get yourself into a church, a Sunday school class. Please, it's so important. If you haven't done so yet, it's so very important to get yourself to church. 
uh, hashtag Fear Not Scranton. You can see a lot of my messages. Um, 10 a.m. on Sunday mornings, Jackson Street Baptist Church, 10 a.m., not 10.30, <laughs> Victoria, 10 a.m. Uh, we're meeting here at Jackson Street, uh, practicing social distancing, being uh, using our common sense, and, and being ever so careful. Still no nursery, still um, a lot of things not happening here like normal, um, but we're making accommodations. We're still able to worship because God is essential. Worship of God is essential. Fellowship is essential. Being careful uh, not to spread the virus. Uh, we invite you to join with us. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we ask your blessing upon your church. We believers need you. We're living in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation. I, I live among a people with unclean lips and unclean hands. And my own hands are filthy, dirty, and, and my thoughts betray me. Father God, have mercy on us and help us, Lord. Help us to, to see how the world is trying to squeeze us into its mold and help us understand the foolishness of the world's wisdom and the wisdom of your foolishness. Father, flick that switch on in people's hearts and minds and help them to get it, to just see it. Father, um, convict, move, teach us, Holy Spirit. We ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen. You want to know more? I told you how. Get involved in a Bible study at church. Come on out to Jackson Street Baptist Church, 10 a.m. Sundays. Many of you have been coming in the midst of this pandemic. Jackson Street Baptist Church is adding to its numbers. It's, it's exciting, you know, and, and so necessary and important. If we want the United States of America to, to grow and to thrive, uh, church churches, the church must grow and thrive, and we must uh, get back on track in our relationship with God and with others. So join with me. Uh, see you tomorrow, and remember, fear not, Scranton. God bless.